How's it going you guys? New Age here with a huge announcement for the channel. Some pretty interesting stuff that I didn't even know was gonna happen. <laughs> it was just kind of thrust upon me. Uh, and we're here to talk about that today. Uh, first I want to say though, I have no idea really how I'm gonna do this video, so it might be heavily edited because I don't want to go on a bunch of rants and make this video like super long. As of recently, I was contacted by a competitive Pokemon League called the National Pokemon Competitive Conference, uh, otherwise known as the NPCC. What I am here to talk about is to introduce you to our team and the Pokemon and go over which ones I got and why I chose them and the battling will start up like this weekend so it's it's gonna get rolling pretty fast first off I want to say uh, actually no I'll save that for my update video <laughs> that doesn't need to be said here our team uh, that we that you are gonna be supporting on this channel is the Antelope Valley Agrons, the AV Agrons, the AVA, whatever you want to call it. Um, Antelope Valley is where I came from, and I figured I had to choose some kind of steel poke. You'd be surprised at how many steel Pokemon do not have names that go with things. Like, damn. It was, it was hard, but it works. I like it. I like it. Uh, so, basically, for those of you guys who don't know how a league works, it's a bunch of, like, Poketubers, competitive battlers, and... Uh, so what they get together they build teams based off certain guidelines and then each week they duke it out battle with their teams uh, like from selected from the roster and it's just a win-loss kind of deal and depending on how good you do towards the end you move on to like the semifinals and then the finals and then there's like a winner of the entire thing and we're gonna make that be us this time around Probably. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but whether or not you guys believe it, I don't actually know how good I am at battling. I like to think I'm pretty decent, but I always doubt myself. But then I always end up doing well, so hopefully that's going to be one of those things this time around. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the team. We got 11 Pokemon. I'm going to try and uh, list them off in the order that I chose them. Uh, so that way you guys can understand my thought process and all that. So, first off, I had in mind what is the deadliest Pokemon I could think of that I just want to, like, wreck shop. And, uh, came to my mind. I've been using it a lot lately, and it's so much fun, and it's just devastating. Allow me to introduce you to my man, Kyrim Black, a.k.a. Kri Lunas. The Kyrian Black. Now this thing, I was just like, it basically has Mold Breaker. It, it's just that in itself makes it amazing. Not to mention the ridiculous coverage it gets. Its attack stat is ginormous. Like I don't even have to run any EVs in attack for this thing to just wreck. Um, so it's basically like, its ability terrible is like Mold Breaker. So things like Levitate, like Rodom, can't come in on an Earth Power. Things like um, Venusaur, who has thick fat, will be weak to my Ice Beam. Things like Skarmory, or anything with sturdy Onyx, will die to a Bolt Strike or an Ice Move. It just like goes through all that stuff, and I love it. So I was like, I definitely got to get my hands on this one. So that was my first pick. It it isn't any more. <laughs> straightforward than that other than like I just want some pure power right here so the next choice as we were going down the list um, I wanted to get a mega Pokemon because I wanted to, I really wanted Kyrie first and I was like I'll, I'll probably get my mega Pokemon but I didn't get my mega Pokemon the mega Pokemon I had in mind was mega Sableye just because great hazard control and all that good stuff and Sableye is one of those teams one of those Pokemon where if you're not ready for it it'll sweep your whole team so, I wanted that, that didn't happen. So, I had to rack my brain, think for a second, what Mega Pokemon do I want? None of them really appealed to me. Uh, so then I just decided, you know what? Let me choose one that I don't necessarily want to use, but one that I don't want to battle against. So, that being said, allow me to introduce you to Becky Bly! 
Menechik! The Mega Menechik. Now this thing, it's fast, it's hard hitting, and it's beautiful. That's a beautiful shiny Pokemon. Uh, I hate battling against Mega Menechik. I just feel like electric types are one of those that are just so strong, and then when it's paired up with something as fast as Manetric, it just makes for a bad time uh, for whoever's on the other side of it. And it gets intimidate. It's there's just so many reasons why this thing is good. So Mega Manetric, I decided to be my choice. Go more with like power instead of utility. It kind of like flipped my whole game plan on its head. Uh, but you know what? We I kind of. <laughs> I kind of had this whole idea for the team, and then it all, it just all kind of went out the window. So I kind of had to build the team as I went. So we got Kyrie, we got Manetric. Basically how it works with the choosing is everyone's trying to get all the good stuff first. So I had to get in there, get the good stuff I wanted as well. So next up, next up, I thought to myself, like I was... I didn't exactly know how to make a team because I'm not good at team building. There's a difference between making monotype teams and making actual teams. So people were saying make a good like grass fire water core and a good fairy steel dragon core. So I was thinking, all right, I want to make sure I get myself a fairy type Pokemon. And I thought, you know what? Let me just get one that's not only like power, but bulk at the same time. So I went ahead and got Sylveon, aka Dartwing. Sylveon, I was thinking, is just like, it's one of those really good ones. I mean, a lot of fairy types do this, but Hyper Voice. Hyper Voice is where it's at. It hits behind subs, like Spec Sylveon just hits so hard. It can be bulky, it can be offensive, it can be like team support, getting rid of like status, or wish passing, or calm mind passing. There's a ton of things that Sylveon can do, and Sylveon was one of the Pokemon that was on my original list. Uh, one of the things that I didn't say is with this draft, I decided that I wanted Pokemon that can do a lot of things. Uh, so that way my opponent can't necessarily just know exactly what I'm going to bring. Which, you know, actually Magnetric is one of those Pokemon. You know, the standard set like Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice Overheat, all that stuff. But, uh... I'm gonna try not to really do that this time around. I mean, if the battle calls for it, and that's what I feel like I need, that's what I'm gonna go for. But I really wanted to do, I really wanted to have options with my team. So Sylveon just like fit that role completely. Uh, it's a nice fairy type that I felt like I really needed, especially to, like I said, going back to not wanting to battle against certain things. If I have a Kyrim on my team, it'd be really nice to not have to deal with the Sylveon. Granted, Kyrim gets Iron Head, and that probably just blows Sylveon back, but we aren't here to talk about that. Moving on! Let's see. Who did I go for next? I think the next one I went for, I decided to go with a Steel type. Um, I originally wanted Skarmory. That got taken from me. Um, but hey, there's more than one Steel type that's got good hazard control. It doesn't really have hazard control, but it, it likes to throw a lot of stuff out. So allow me to introduce you to Ferrothorn. AKA Double Tap. Now, Ferrothorn, I love using Ferrothorn. Those of you who know me, you know I love Ferrothorn. Uh, it gets a lot of, it's just another one of those Pokemon. It gets a lot of different options. Stealth Rocks, Leech Seed Spikes, it gets all of them. Plus great defenses, a decent, it's a good Steel type. It's a good Steel type. And uh, of course there's, you know, the fire weakness and all that stuff. But other than that, it makes a perfect Pokemon. And I really, you'll see as we go on with the team, I don't have much hazard control. And I'm completely aware with, aware of this. But Ferrothorn is one of the ones that I thought like, this is gonna be a good Pokemon just to get those hazards up and keep them up. And Ferrothorn again is one of those Pokemon where if you're not prepared for it, it can just wall your entire team. Especially with things like Leech Seed and all that. So, or even if you are prepared for it, if I get rid of, what you have for Ferrothorn, and then it can just wall the rest of your team. So, uh, I have a lot of Pokemon, I think, that are just like, if you're not ready for them, then you just kind of lose. And I know there's a lot of Pokemon that are like that, and I'm sure there's plenty that I'm not prepared for that are like that. But that's why I chose Ferrothorn. I just really need a good hazard setter, and I want a decent steel type Pokemon. So that's why I chose Ferrothorn. So now, here I am. 
thinking, man, my team is pretty weak to fire. And I couldn't get Heatran, because someone took that. So, <laughs> Heatran was also on my list. Uh, but I thought, you know what? Let me... I don't I actually don't know why I chose this, but... I do like this as a good fire resist. I think one of the reasons I like it is because it's not just a fire type. It's an electric type. So here we go. Rodham Heat, aka Electric Cherry. Now this thing... I mean, Levitate. A, a fire electric Pokemon with Levitate, it's pretty hard to go wrong there. Sure, like I said earlier, there's things like Mold Breaker and Earthquake and all that, but I felt like this was a much needed addition to the team. Um, again, it has a lot of options. It can paralyze, it can burn, it can be pretty bulky. We get like the Resto Chesto options, Volt Switching Around, that's always fun, and then we have a solid fire immunity. So Rodham was more like an easy, simple choice. I just thought like, I don't know. I At first I wanted to go like pretty offensive with my choices, but then later on down the road, I decided I wanted to go for more of a bulky offensive. So you'll see that in a lot of my team. That's really what I'm aiming towards. So I think, who did I choose next? I'm pretty sure the next Pokemon I chose was Slowbro. AKA Dr. Flopper. Now, Slowbro, I mean, everyone knows about Slowbro. It's hella bulky. And I like that it has the option, like, if I really wanted to, I can go Assault Vest and Special Defense and all that good stuff. But either way, it's just like a great water type to take pressure off some of my Pokemon. Like, you know, Rodham. It. It's all part of the core. Like I said, I was trying to focus on that a lot. Uh, towards the end is when I started just branching off into like trying to fix up holes that I noticed. Um, so Slowbro is a is definitely a good choice. I feel just because what I had in mind with it was more so using it to wear down teams. I mean, it gets things like Toxic. It basically has access to all of the status ailments. All Pokemon get toxic, but Slowbro gets Thunder Wave and Scald for burning. So it's definitely, it's one of those Pokemon that's just like a pain to deal with. And along with Regenerator, like that's really nice. Pokemon with Regenerator is where it's at. Um, and I definitely have answers, like things to back up Slowbro, you know, like the Grass Weakness coming in with like Ferrothorn or Rotom, or the Electric Weakness coming in with like Magnetric. Especially, too, because one of the rules in uh, the league, as far as Mega Evolution goes, is you have to Mega Evolve the Pokemon the first turn you send it out. So I could easily have myself like a Lightning Rod Magnetric just chilling in the back and wait to send it out till later on an electric move. And just... The Lightning Rod is the one that boosts the attack, right? I'm pretty sure. So I could send that out and just have, like, a pretty solid boost. Actually, I want to... I don't want to sound stupid here. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Let's see. I'm pretty sure, because Volt Absorb is the one that gives you HP. That's what it sounds like. Ah, yeah. Special Attack raised one stage. So, a plus one Mega Manetric. That's not, that's not something to mess with. So, Slowbro definitely works. Definitely brings the team together. And Water Pokemon are not fun to deal with so having a good answer just for the water types is going to be nice on its own i mean i have my net trick for that as well it's another reason why i really want to choose it because i've seen a lot of league battles and bulky water pokemon are things but not really for mega manetric not really all right so we got those out of the way so far i think next i really wanted a uh i really wanted my grass type my actual grass type, not Ferrothorn. Well, this. <laughs> a lot of my Pokemon, I try and say that they're the type, but they're all pretty much dual types, so it doesn't doesn't work out so well. But allow me to introduce you to Hashirama, the Trevenant. Now, Trevenant, I love Trevenant. I originally wanted Whimsicott, but then that was when I first wanted my like offensive, you know. Uh, but I know, because I know Whimsicott can beat entire teams on its own with the right set. I've done it before. It's hilarious. 
but Trevenant can do the same. I've been using Trevenant a lot lately, and I've seen it firsthand. Trevenant is a scary Pokemon to go up against. Um, it can't be statist. It, I mean, like, just using like a sub citrus harvest set, like this thing never dies. Uh, and you'll see later we have some answers for things like uh, ghost types and dark types and all that stuff against Trevenant. Uh, but otherwise, like, I don't know. Just as the team came together, I started to love it more and more. And Trevenant is just a great addition. I can't wait to use it. And it'll be interesting to see how other people deal with it. Uh, because I've definitely used it against not so competitive people. And it just kind of wins. Uh, so <laughs> it'll be nice to see how actual competitive people deal with the Trevenant. But that being said, actually we're not moving on to that yet. What we're moving on to is a Pokemon that I knew I wanted from the beginning. I don't know why, but something in my gut told me, you know what? You're going to make this work. And it's gonna be great. So allow me to introduce you to P. Diddy the Ditto. I don't know why, but looking at everyone else's teams, all I kept thinking was, man, I don't wanna get set up on and swept. So I'm gonna have a Ditto. And anytime I see the potential of someone trying to set up on me, I'm gonna bring this Ditto. Because all that does is give me that same Pokemon that's about to sweep me, and I can use it to sweep them. Mine might be even stronger or faster, whatever it is, it's gonna come in handy, and I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to say about Ditto. It gets one move, one good ability, you send it out there, you turn into whatever the hell's in your face, and you just throw it back at him. And I can't wait to try and pull this off in a competitive play. I, I I enjoy me some troll Pokemon, so... Which, I think between like Trevenant, Ferrothorn, Ditto, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's definitely what we're doing here, everyone. That's what we're doing. And I'm proud that I was able to get Ditto. I don't think anyone was really even trying to get Ditto. <laughs> but I'm glad I got it, either way. So now let's move on back to the competitive side of things so here i am thinking all right i got like my decent cores down um so now it's just time to cover some weaknesses and one of the things i noticed is i really don't like ghost types i don't like ghost types i don't like fighting types i mean there's certain things i mean sure i have sylveon maybe Slowbro, but these, these next few choices are for sure going to try and handle those kinds of things. So first off, the Ghost Resist, we got Umbreon, Ringer of Death. Now Umbreon, I mean, everyone knows, Umbreon, hella bulky. And even like, it, this is the part that sucks. Most Ghost type Pokemon get fighting moves, whether it's Gengar throwing off a Focus Blast or Golurk hitting you with a dynamic punch like it's really unfortunate but the thing I love about Umbreon is that it doesn't even matter like Umbreon is one of those Pokemon that you just can say for sure like hey I'm gonna send it in on this Gengar's focus blast and it's gonna be able to take it and then beat the Gengar so I just felt like I, I was going back and forth between a few different dark types I considered Zoroark for a little bit just to kind of be like, hey, I've ditto, might as well, <laughs> might as well have Zoroark. But then I thought, nah, that's too hilarious. I gotta be serious for a minute. So I went ahead and chose Umbreon. Uh, that's another one. I mean, it's pretty much Sylveon, but Dark type. <laughs> so it has the same things, you know. It can heal the team. It can pass to the team. It can stall with status. Um, and then Umbreon having Synchronize is really great too. That's just like an ability that will always come in handy for competitive play. And it just covers up some of those uh, weaknesses for like Ghost and all that. Uh, so that's why I chose Umbreon. And now, now, even more so, my team is more weak to fighting. And uh, there weren't many, <laughs> there weren't many types, there weren't many Pokemon to choose from at this point. Um, so... I was thinking like, 
maybe a poison type would be nice and there were a lot of poison types I was looking through uh, but then a lot a lot of my mindset was let me look at what these other guys have and think about what I'm kind of afraid to deal with um, and I was seeing a lot of things where I was like you know what I I'm gonna need a flying type as well and what better fighting resist than a poison and a flying type so allow me to introduce Deadshot the Golbat. Now Golbat, I mean, uh, with Eviolite, <laughs> well, alright, <laughs> let me say this first. Crobat was already taken, <laughs> so I couldn't get Crobat. Um, but Golbat is going to be just as good. It may not be as fast, but damn, this thing will take hits. And uh, I've already started prepping for some of my future battles and just seeing, like, how Golbat can take hits from certain Pokemon, it's amazing. Like, fighting resist, there it is, Golbat. I love it. And even, like, of course, it's the same thing with, uh, who was I saying? I don't remember who I was saying it with, but the same thing I was saying earlier, fighting types get multiple type moves. So fighting types obviously get things like Stone Edge, Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, all that. But Golbat, Golbat's gonna eat it up. And also, I forgot a key point for choosing Golbat as well. I have zero hazard control on my team. Um, I don't so much think I need it. There's a few Pokemon where it'd be nice for, like Rodham and Kyrim, but I mean, Regenerator Slowbro, Trevenant with its healing, Sylveon and Umbreon with its healing. It might suck a bit for Magnetric, but I don't feel like my team is extremely weak to hazards. Yeah, I would definitely love, like, some more hazard control, but like I said, I was just kind of, like, picking not really random, just more trying to make sure I got certain things covered. Uh, so that was why I chose Golbat. Uh, I think it's going to work out pretty well, especially too, because it. one of my favorite things about it is it can hit fighting types with Brave Bird. So that's a flying type move. People have switches for flying type moves, like steel types or rock types. But then comes Golbat getting Super Fang. So you want to switch a rock or steel type into Golbat? Fine. You're gonna lose half your HP when you do it. So it's one of those where it's like it kind of covers itself in its own way, which is really cool. Just being able to wear down bulky Pokemon without needing that huge attack stat is really cool. And that's one of the things I really like about like the whole Golbat, Crobat line, all that together. So, that being said, I believe we only have one more Pokemon. Yes, we do. Alright, my last choice. Um, I don't even remember why I chose this one. I think I was just like, I want a bulky Pokemon. I think it was, um, I wanted a ground resist because my team is a bit weak to ground. Uh, Ferrothorn, Rodham is weak to rocks, rock types. Uh, Manetric obviously is weak to ground. So there's a few things where I was like, I really want a bulky Pokemon for that type. Um, so I was thinking Steel or Rock. What do I go for? Well, I already got Ferrothorn with a Steel. Kind of a decent Steel type as far as, you know, Rock and Ground type moves. So I went with the Rock route. So I went ahead and chose my man Rhydon, aka Mule Kick. Now Rhydon is another one of those Pokemon that I can use Eviolite with. And sure, it's not going to be taking a water move or anything, but we got other Pokemon for that. Rhydon is here to eat up any of these physical hits that want to come our way. And it gets, it's just another Pokemon with more hazards. Um, it gets a lot of options for its movesets, whether it's like Rock Polish, SD. I mean, just the fact that it gets things like Rock Blast that can break through subs and Focus Sashes. There's a lot of really cool things that Rhydon can do. And it also gets access to a lot of different moves, like Avalanche and Fire Punch, just things that like certain Pokemon don't get access to all those types. 
So I felt like Ride On was a solid choice, nice and bulky, nice good coverage, got another option for my hazards, and uh, yeah, Ride On, I like it. <laughs> so that's the entire team for you guys we're going to be using this season. Um, I'm pretty sure we're allowed to trade and stuff, but I don't know. I don't really see myself doing it. Um, just going through the effort of trying to find someone to get a certain Pokemon from. I mean, unless someone really wants to trade with me. But then again, I get really attached to my Pokemon, and I already love this team. Uh, so I don't know if I'll be trading any anytime soon. Uh, but as far as the team as a whole, I wanted to talk about a few things. Um, like I said, the big one is hazard control, and one of the things that I think is important in a team, more so than hazard control, is hazard prevention, and I for sure don't have that. So things like fake out, fast Pokemon that can, you know, like fake out or break sashes, like say, um, I don't know, let's say like Metagross for example. Um, you can like earthquake the first turn. And sure, they'll get up the hazards, but then hit them with a bullet punch if they had a sash. Then it's basically like the sash wasn't around. Granted, they got up their hazards. That Pokemon doesn't get to stay around to hit you more. Uh, my team is fairly lacking in priority. Um, I actually don't think I have any. So, I could definitely see that uh, messing me up later on down the road. Another thing I noticed... Um, like I said, I was going for... I wanted to go offensive to begin with. And what I was thinking for that was... A lot of the time... <clears throat> a lot of the times when I make teams... Um, my teams are always getting outsped by certain things that are just like really hard to deal with. So my, my mindset was... I want fast Pokemon that can keep up with the other fast Pokemon. But as the choices kind of went on, I kind of drifted away from that and just leaned more towards the bulky side like I tend to do. So, my team is pretty lacking in speed. I have Kyrium that's decently fast and Manitrick that's fast. Otherwise, all my stuff is pretty damn slow. So, uh, being outsped is definitely a thing to worry about. Hazard control, hazard prevention. Another thing, um... That was another thing too why I chose Ride On. I didn't really want to get set up on. So I was bouncing back and forth between Steelix and Ride On because I knew Steelix got Dragon Tail and I really wanted Phasers on my team because I don't really have that. <clears throat> um, and I don't want Pokemon setting up on me either. So I looked and I was like, all right, if Ride On gets Roar, I mean, I, I didn't even need it to get Dragon Tail. I was more just like, if it gets some kind of phasing move, then I'll pick that over Steelix. And it did, it gets Roar. So, I have some options for phasing on my team, but not too many. Uh, so, that's another thing to worry about. Uh, another thing I've also noticed is my team is fairly weak to status uh, conditions. Not too bad, but when I was like messing, messing around with some of these Pokemon, and I went into some battles, things like Toxic really messes me up. I mean, I have a lot of like Paralysis immunities, like, you know, Trevenant is a good status absorber. Umbreon spreads it if it does get status, so that's nice. Uh, and then I have, like, immunities in Rodom and Manetric and Rhydon, so Paralysis isn't really a thing. Um, being burned kind of messes me up, depending on who it is. I mean, Kyrie has a great special attack stat, so I'm not 100% worried about that one either. And Manetric being my Mega, a lot of my Pokemon are special attackers as well. So, then again, that brings me to another thing I'm worried about, are like special walls. Um, that's another reason why I chose Manetric, because things like Milotic, you know, is definitely an issue, and I don't even think Manetric can one-shot a Milotic. I more just kind of have to hope that uh, it can, because then there's things like Miracle, and then my Manetric is gone, and then Milotic just kind of sets up on my whole team. So. There's a lot of bulky Pokemon that I'm worried about, and I'm just kind of hoping I can power through those. So there's a ton of things I've realized are wrong with the team as I was making it and after I made it. But, you know, we're, we're gonna 
those are just things I want to talk about that I realized right away. If you guys realize some other things or realize some other ways that I could use Pokemon that would be useful, go ahead and let me know down below. That would be really cool. But other than that, that's the team, you guys, and I'd love to have your support through the season. It's going to be cool to, like, hopefully move forward and have you guys, like, cheering the team on and just being able to compete against, like, other competitive battlers is just I love that kind of thing I love to test myself and see how good I fare against other people so that's it you guys um, the first battle goes up this coming Saturday I believe that's the 11th that's what they told me I don't know if that's actually the date. and I am gonna have a team building video for my first battle that'll go up Friday the day before the battle so you guys can look forward to all that good stuff and uh, yeah Leave a like if you enjoyed, leave a like if you're hyped, and if you want to support the team, um, if you want to check out the NPCC, the link for their Twitter will be down below. It's actually just going to start being in all my videos, um, but I am going to try and have everyone's YouTube in the description for all the other people that are in the NPCC. Um, hopefully I can get all those. I don't know. I know I'm subscribed to most of them, but some of them... <coughs> I don't know if I've gotten in touch with everyone yet. So I'll try, I'll have as many links as I can down below. Um, and if you guys are from the NPCC and you're watching this and your channel is not in the description, just like comment down below and I'll go to your channel sub and I will get your link and put it in the description. So that's another thing I can do uh, for you guys. So yeah. Until then, you guys, until the first battle, I hope you guys are excited, because I am. Also, I am New Age. Still, keep on watching. I'll see you guys next time. Later.